Now let's draw the plexus together. You got roots, five roots, the C5, C6, the top two roots will unite and it will make the upper trunk. The C7 nerve root will stay alone and will become the middle trunk. It is like the middle child. You like to be alone, you like to be independent until they learn the lesson. C5, C6 join, become the upper trunk. C7 comes along and say, no, I don't want to be part of that. I'm going to be alone. You know, there are five roots involved. So the other two roots are C8, T1. They don't think C7 idea is a good idea. So they join. C8 and T1 join, so the lower two roots unite to make the lower trunk. Now we have three trunks, the upper trunk, the middle trunk, and the lower trunk. Look at the ground and see the roots of the tree. After the roots of the tree, what do you find? You find the trunk of the tree. Each of the three trunks will split into two divisions, anterior division and posterior division. Here is the most important point. The three posterior division unite to form the posterior cord. This is, for me, the coronary stone of the brachial plexus, in that posterior cord. So what happened to the three anterior divisions? The upper Two anterior division unite to form the lateral cord. The lower anterior division forms the medial cord. It seems like the anterior division of the lower trunk want to be alone. Obviously, they learn from the middle child theory, and also they don't like the word lower. So, they're going to prove they are independent and they're going to be alone. And they will be called the medial cord. So now we got posterior cord, lateral cord, and medial cord that are named according to the relationship with the axillary artery. So the posterior cord is posterior to the axillary artery. The medial cord is medial to the axillary artery. The lateral cord is lateral to the axillary artery. We seen the roots from C5 to T1. We seen the trunks, the upper, the middle, the lower. We seen the divisions, the anterior and posterior. We seen the cords, lateral, posterior, and medial, but we haven't seen the branches. So what are the branches? Let's start with branches from the roots and the upper trunk. These branches are important because they are preclavicular branches, which means if they are injured, it can give you a bad prognosis. So branches from the roots are the following. From C5, it comes the dorsal scapular nerve that supply the elevator scapula, the rhomboides major, and the rhomboides minor. From C5, C6, C7 comes the long thoracic nerve, which supplies the serratus anterior. If the serratus anterior is affected, you get medial winging of the scapula. If you see a medial winging of the scapula, in a case of brachial plexus injury, you need to determine if that lesion is preganglionic or postganglionic. So you can look for additional things like Horner's syndrome, which is ptosis, meiosis, and hydrosis, and enophthalmos. That sounds bad. So if it is bad, it's preganglionic. Let's see if the trunks give us any branches. The only one that give us a branch is the upper trunk. The superior trunk feels very special. 
It will give us the suprascapular nerve, which supplies the supraspinatus and infraspinatus muscle. It probably gives us the nerve to subclavius also. So the upper trunk, the suprascapular nerve, means the rotator cuff. So if you find wasting of the supraspinatus and infraspinatus muscles, it could mean a preganglionic injury or supraclavicular injury. So the upper trunk injury will come with that presentation. There will be no shoulder abduction or external rotation of the shoulder, no elbow flexion. There will be decreased sensation in the thumb and the index finger with normal scapular control. So where the lesion probably will be in the upper trunk. Now let's go to the divisions. The division will not give us any branches. Now after the divisions you will have the cords. The posterior cord is the coronary stone because the posterior cord take all the posterior divisions and join them into one cord, the posterior cord. So you got three cords, the lateral cord, the posterior cord, the medial cord. The lateral cord will give you three branches, the posterior cord will give you five branches, and the medial cord that was alone by itself will give you five branches. So let's take the lateral cord, three branches, the lateral pectoral, the muscular cutaneous, and the lateral branch of the median nerve. Just remember the lateral cord supplies the muscular cutaneous nerve. How about the posterior cord? The posterior cord gives branches, which are the upper subscapular, the thoracodorsal, and the lower subscapular and end by two branches, which is the axillary nerve and the radial nerve. So you got five branches from the posterior cord. The upper subscapular branch will supply the subscapularis muscle. The thoracodorsal nerve will supply the latissimus dorsi muscle, a muscle we frequently use it as a free tissue transfer. And the lower subscapular nerve will supply the subscapular muscle and also supply the teres major. The teres major is just below the subscapularis, so the lower subscapular nerve will feel sorry for the muscle, the teres major, and will give it a branch. It's interesting that the thoracodorsal nerve to the latissimus dorsi is it squeezed between the upper and the lower subscapular nerve when all of them arise from the posterior cord. The posterior cord ends by the axillary nerve which supplies the teres minor and the deltoid and also it gives the radial nerve which supplies all muscles of the posterior arm and forearm. Some people use the word stars to remember the branches of the posterior cord. So in posterior cord injury, you will have radial plus palsy. Radial nerve palsy, which is drop rest, plus an axillary nerve palsy. The last one is the medial cord cord that give five branches, three branches and two terminal branches. Just remember the medial cord, it's medial, it's ulnar. So if we have lateral pectoral branch from the lateral cord, we got to do a medial pectoral branch from the medial cord. So that is the first branch for the medial cord, the medial pectoral followed by the medial cutaneous nerve of the arm, followed by the medial antibrachial cutaneous nerve. The medial antibrachial cutaneous 
nerve can be injured during elbow arthroscopy or during work on the under nerve to release the under nerve and transpose it. The terminal branch of the medial cord is the under nerve and it also gives a medial branch for the median nerve. The lateral branch of the median nerve and the medial branch of the median nerve join together to make the median nerve. How about the medial pectoral? There might be some confusion and I will explain it. So the medial pectoral will give the medial part of the muscle, the sternocostal. The lateral pectoral, which comes out of the lateral cord, will give the clavicular part of the muscle, which is the lateral part of the muscle, which comes from the upper trunk, which comes from C5, C6. Just remember, the posterior cord gives you the radial and the axillary. The lateral cord will give you the muscular cutaneous. And the medial cord will give you the under nerve. Contribution from the medial and lateral cord will give you the median nerve. Thank you very much for listening and good luck.